Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. You'll get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And when I'm not asking Bruce, hey, how big was Batista's? Well, you know. One of the things I like to do is help people save money. And if you're watching this video right now and you're in a 30 year loan, man, you're overpaying your single biggest bill and you may not even realize it. I want you to do a little experiment for me. Take your calculator out, multiply your monthly house payment by 360 payments. That's how many payments there are in a 30 year loan. That big scary number, that's your total of payments. You're looking at that number? You know you can do better. Keep more of your own money right now and go to savewithconrad.com. Or maybe you've got credit card debt. Man, it's not a matter of if I can save you money with that. Your average interest rate on a credit card is more than 20%. And by the way, all the interest you pay on those credit cards, it's not tax deductible. Whereas the mortgage interest, well, that is tax deductible. So if you owe this debt, it's up to you how to pay it back. Doesn't it make sense to get the cheapest rate possible and the greatest tax deduction possible? Find out how much money you can save right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com. You don't need perfect credit, even scores in the 500s can be approved, and it's no cost out of pocket. But maybe best of all, we're licensed in more than 40 states. We can help more families than ever before. But how much can we save you? Find out right now for free with a quick quote from SaveWithConrad.com. Will he want a gold medal with a broken freaking neck? He's a real athlete, so give him your respect. He's got intensity, integrity, intelligence too. Oh, it's true, it's damn true. So if he ever finds you and you're chanting you suck, then he'll douse you in dairy with his big milk truck. And with one angle slam, he'll lay you out on the floor. So listen up. Hey, this is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. On the show today, we'll be talking to one of my favorite opponents of all time. He's the greatest lucha wrestler in the history of professional wrestling. He's the legend, Rey Mysterio, and his son, Dominic, who has torn up the wrestling scene so early in his career. But first, I want to introduce to you my co-host, Paul Bromwell. How are you doing today, Paul? Kurt, I'm doing wonderful. I'm super excited to be here. The last time you and I were together with a huge interview, it was Edge, and that was a huge highlight for me. But this is one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, Ray Mysterio. Man, I'm excited. Let's get started. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's patch Ray in. <laughs> hey, Kurt. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Paul. Hey, Dominic. How you guys doing? We're doing wonderful. Thank you. Very good. How Welcome about you to guys? the Kurt Angle Show. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being on, my friends. All right, we're going to get started. First question, Ray. You grew up in the professional wrestling business. And we're pretty much born in this business, weren't you? Yes, pretty much. At a very young age, I was introduced to, to Lucha Libre. Yeah, uh, my mom's younger brother, Ray Mysterio Sr., is uh, the person at fault for, for bringing me into this world of wrestling. Your uncle, right? <laughs> yes, my uncle, uh huh? Yes. Very cool. <laughs> well, listen, right. You started wrestling at the age of 14 and it gave you all the experience that you could ever want. Was there anything outside of wrestling that you had ever aspired to be, or was it always wrestling? Not, not really. Uh, it's always, it was always wrestling for me. I was obsessed with wrestling. Um, you can only imagine growing up in, in the world of, of Lucha Libre at a very young age, uh, you know, it was literally uh, like seeing um, these superheroes with masks that they covered their identity. You you weren't able to see them. I wasn't able to see some of my favorite wrestlers growing up without the mask because they were so uh, secretive with their image, uh, including my uncle, until one day he lost the mask. But um, overall, you know, uh, at a very young age, started training at the age of eight. And then had my professional match, like you said, at 14, it was, uh, it was, this is, this was my world. Wow. Ray, that's pretty awesome. My friend. So your uncle was the one that inspired you to wrestle. Yes. 100%. I remember he would, when I was, uh, when I was a fan, we would go see my uncle wrestle. And sometimes after the shows, I would go spend the weekend with him. He would normally wrestle on Fridays and I would help him take out his gear, his boots and air it all out you know, on the floor, I would put his mask on and, and uh, kind of play wrestle with him. 
you know, so uh, you can only imagine this is a pretty much what Dominic lived as a young kid as well. <laughs> he walked on the same path, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, Ray, in 1996, I was winning a gold medal and you were debuting in WCW. I know you had wrestled in Mexico for years and had worked in ECW as well. But I have to ask, what were the differences between working in Mexico and the United States at that time? Well, um, I was always raised uh, lucha style, and it's very fast paced. Um, it, it, there's a huge, a huge difference. Um, and that I didn't know or start adapting to it once I got to WCW and I worked with the Eddies and the um, Jericho's and the Malenko's, you know, it was still a fast paced match, but it was more of working how to sell, selling properly in Mexico. It was, it was mainly high spot fest, all action. you know, yeah, all action nonstop. And there was really no control in the ring by the ref um, only for the finish. And here in the U S you know, uh, is when I really started to, adapt to this American style wrestling and pace myself and know when to do certain moves during matches. Dean was one of the first to ever put me on, on point with that because uh, my first match in WCW, as you know, was a great American bash. Now I was thinking that I was going in for a tryout and uh, I got to the, to the event and I asked what match I was going to be in or was it going to be dark thinking it? I had no idea what dark matches were back then, but now I do. So now, you know, uh, going back to that story, it was just, uh, I'm, I'm a 19 year old kid coming in there trying to get a dark match, but no, I was put on uh, the main pay-per-view to open up the great American bash. Wow. And you mentioned Dean Malenko was kind of that guy that took you under his wing and said, Hey, pace yourself. Was there anybody else that was an influencer kind of worked with you at the age of 19 and said, okay, Ray, I know it's a hundred miles an hour, but this is kind of how, how we do it here. This is, this is kind of how you want, need to adapt your style in, in the U S. So I, I started learning about that again in WCW and I would have people constantly, uh, Scott Hall, okay. Kevin Nash, you know, uh, just kind of guiding me on how to, do things here in, in the U S and, um, Ben wall, uh, again, Jericho that was around, um, you know, even, uh, diamond Dallas page, you know, uh, so it was always getting feedback and it was hard for me trying to put that together thinking that are they telling me to not go so fast because I'm, because I'm doing too much or is it, is it, was it really a genuine, uh, um, concept from them to, to slow down my pace, to last longer and to make the things shine much more than, than what they were. Better psychology, right? Ray? Yes. One, 1000%. So you de debut in WCW after leaving ECW. Could you have ever imagined in the, at that time that you would still be wrestling and doing it at the level you're doing in 2021? No. No, not at all. I'll tell you what, I, I, uh, I recall um, before I even went to Mexico at the age of 17, uh, I was working at my brother's uh, restaurant, uh, pizza parlor, and I would take my breaks from 12 to 1 p.m. on Saturdays. And I would sit down, uh, have a, a, a mini pizza, what we called it, and I would put on uh, WWF at the time, you know, and I would rock that from 12 to 1 Never would I have thought that I would make it to where I'm at now, uh, let alone just uh, to be able to compete at the level that I'm competing still. I, I got to ask, you're, you're eating, you're rocking that mini pizza. You're sitting there from 12 to one. Who's your favorite WWF wrestler? Who do you, or who, who a couple of them? Macho Man, Brett the Hitman Hart, um, you know, um, Jake the Snake. Uh, I just, it was just a variety. And for me, that was all. Um, very different from, from Lucha Libre, you know, uh, um, these were like characters that were developed, like, uh, like seeing a movie, you know, uh, um, these were, uh, uh, beyond, uh, 
realistic. And they were huge, you know, at the time they were huge. So again, because of the, of the weight and just because it was, to me, it was impossible. It wasn't even in my, in my um, dreams to eventually make it to WWE. So, uh, you know, to be able to, to climb as much as I've climbed up to now has been a true blessing. I feel strongly that saving money is important. You know, if it's not something we worry about now, boy, we are really going to worry about it later. And I want to help you get out of debt faster and do it with cheaper monthly payments. I'm talking to you. If you're in a 30 year loan, now is the time to take years off of your loan. We're routinely helping our listeners cut five, 10, even 15 years off their loan. And you can do this without perfect credit with no money out of pocket. You've just got to start at SaveWithConrad.com. Well, obviously you debuting in WCW was a big deal for you, but coming in the way you did really wasn't seen at the time, Ray. We just talked about this walking into WCW. Did you know that you would revolutionize the business? Not really. Uh, the one person that constantly, um, stayed in my ear was Conan Mm. and Conan would tell me, bro, listen to me. He said, what you guys are doing now. He goes, that's what the fans are eventually going to want to watch. You know, you guys are changing the sport. Now, at the time, we were just enjoying and and doing what we love. But uh, never did I think that it was going to make such an impact that, um, you know, uh, this is the style now. Fans have been adapted to watch a particular style. And uh, in a way, they can combine both the big man style and the Lucha Libre high flying style. Ray, to this day, there's still talk online about the glory days of WCW. And honestly, it's not always good, but the match with you and Eddie from Halloween Havoc in 1997 will always be ranked as one of the best matches in wrestling history. The story behind the match, though, is that you were supposed to lose your mask and the last minute it was changed. Is that all how it went down? And what do you remember of this all-time classic wrestling match? So I remember I didn't want to show up to the pay-per-view um, because again, I was supposed to lose my mask that night. Um, long story short, uh, I was, I was told that if I didn't show up, I was in breach of contract. So I showed up and uh, once I was there, you know, I'm, I'm going over my match and uh, fans are in, everything's pumping and everything's going. Um, and I'm thinking, damn, you know, if it's going to be what it's going to be, you know, I can't get out of this. So uh, I just I had already set my mind to going up there and losing the mask. And shortly before our match, um, they came up to us and said, the finish has been changed. Ray, you're going over. <laughs> um, and I don't well, know. If Eddie, your mask. <laughs> you think Eddie, do you think Eddie knew something about that? He probably didn't. Didn't tell him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He might have known Eddie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I didn't lose my mask. Um, I was a uh, nervous wreck because I was I was trying to put everything together and, and we had to change a bunch of things in the match. Um, but it ended up being a perfect match for me. And I know Eddie was asked this before he passed. Um, how was that match in Halloween Cavic 97? He goes, I wouldn't change anything in that match. That match happened the way it should have happened. And I I believe the same thing. Wow, you guys had no regrets on it, huh? No. Well, later on in WCW, you do lose your mask. And I'm sure it's a sore subject. But is it one of your biggest regrets in the wrestling business? I don't think so, Kurt. I think uh, um, when I lost the mask, the next night, I... I faced Kevin Nash and that's when uh, the giant killer came up, you know, and uh, sometimes I think to myself, if I wouldn't have lost the, lost the mask, would I have had the push that I got Robert against all these bigger guys? I don't know, but because it happened, there was a positive side to it. And that's when I started working with the bigger guys, which eventually uh, opened up the doors for me in, in WWE. Into the heavyweight division. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Dom, I have a question for you. Do you like wearing the mask or do you prefer being maskless? Um, honestly, uh, 
off, off of preference, I would love to wear the mask just because of tradition. Um, but everything just happened so fast that I'm, I'm cool with not having a mask right now. I don't blame you. You got a, you got a good looking face, man. <laughs> now there's, there's a, there's a, a quick story behind the mask, Kurt. Um, <clears throat> when I started wrestling, I wrestled under the name Colibri, the hummingbird. Mm. And that was from the age of 14 to roughly about the age of 17. Um, I was thinking that I was going to get Ray Mysterio Jr. right off the back. But no, my uncle kind of pushed it aside and made me work for it. One day in a match, um, I had already, in, in Mexico, as you know, you start from the bottom match and you work your way up on the card. Uh, not like here in the U.S. where a main event can be the first match opening the show. Right. Mexico is the other way around. But um, I was in the second match one night and I went to the ring, me and my tag team partner, and my uncle came out and made an announcement that from that day on, I was no longer going to be Colibri. And he had a Rey Mysterio mask, which he put on as I took off the Colibri one without showing my face. And that's how Rey Mysterio Jr. began. Wow. So uh, I earned it. I earned the mask. You know, he didn't just have it to mean me. a lot to you. huh? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Ray, the crazy thing about the mask is probably when you take it off, you look like you could be your son's brother. That, I mean, you always just look so young without the mask, man. And, and before we move on, though, I have to ask a question talking about masks. And this has come up on social media recently. What's the message that you would give the kids as you would go head to head with them and give them the mask at ringside? What would, what would be that little comment or what would you say to them as you would bump heads with them and give them that mask? It, it would vary depending on uh, on how pumped up that kid was. But um, most of the times it was a, a moment of of thanking them for being a Rey Mysterio fan. And uh, that idea from the mask I got from Bret Hart. Right. You know, when Bret Hart would do the shades mm -hmm. um, back when I was at the pizza parlor eating a mini pizza, I would there see you that, go. you know, um, eventually it came up a uh, time where. I started giving the masks out to the kids. And um, that was an idea based off of uh, Brett the Hitman Hart's character. Uh, very nice. Well, listen, when WCW was sold, you're not immediately brought into the WWF at the time. What were your conversations like at that time with the company? So when the company was bought out, I was told right off the bat that uh, they were interested in me. But they wanted me to let my WCW contract run out. Once it ended, that we would sit down and do business. I thought that it was uh, a nice way of saying, no, we're not interested. <laughs> because a lot of contracts were bought out. Right. You know, Chavo, Bookers, a lot of guys. So, again, I, I'm thinking, is Vince really going to open up the doors for me? Because he doesn't believe in small guys. You know, um, I don't, I think, yeah, at the time, at the time. Yeah. Um, and I, I would hear that sometimes from Nash, from Hall, but, um, you know, I never lost hope. And sure enough, when that contract expired, uh, JR reached out and said, okay, we're ready to do business. And that's when I signed. So they kept their word. Awesome. Ray. In 2002, you signed with the WWE and are placed on the SmackDown brand. You beat or you debut on June 16th in Anaheim. And this is my favorite part of this, Ray. You beat Chavo Guerrero on your debut. And the very next match, I hit Hulk Hogan over the head with a steel chair for a DQ. What a difference, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. What a difference. <laughs> that was in Anaheim. That was in Anaheim. That was your debut match wow. against Chavo. Yes. Is, yep. is that when we climbed up or when I climbed up the cage and dove? Yes. Same night? Yes. That's the wow. same night. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Crazy. So, Ray, listen, you actually starred on the road for about a month prior to getting on TV. Do you remember the thought process behind that? Did they want to use you uh, during that time for you as far as to get used to the ring uh, before you made your debut? Do you remember kind of working behind the scenes or a little bit off camera until that big debut? Yes, I, I remember going to OVW and uh, just to kind of get familiarized with, uh, with the ring, which is much bigger than the WCW ring. 
And uh, <clears throat> I remember training. And then all of a sudden, they wanted to know what I was going to wear. Um, just out of, out, of, out of nowhere, it just came from left field. What, what ring gear are you going to wear? So I showed them what I was using at the time. I was using like that uh, big pop of pump, that uh, like Excalibur uh, shield and a vest. Uh, I said, this, this is what I'm going to wear. They're like, well, what about the mask? So well, I'm, not, I'm not using the mask anymore. They're like, no, 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 no. You're, they want you to use the mask. I was like, oh, nobody told me anything. So um, um, I quickly had to change and recreate my design, you know, to, to start wearing something different than WCW and new to WWE. But uh, again, that was, there was a big confusion there. I thought I was going to uh, be part of the company and wrestle without the mask. But no, that's where the marketing really came in place. I want to reiterate, Ray. So it was the WWE's idea to put your mask on and not yours. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. I would have yeah. thought you were the one that would have presented it to WWE. No, no, it was well. I, I was already, I had already been wrestling for almost two years without the mask. So I was getting comfortable. Um, but uh, of course, WWE knows how to market everything. Yeah. And the mask was something that WCW never took advantage of. So Especially WWE for jumped kids. on it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And WWE jumped on it right away. So, Ray, were you given the creative freedom to come up with some of the really cool, uh, you know, masks and costumes and Avenger style gear that you would kind of be known for through the years? Or was that so, kind of you partnering with the WWE's creative team on some of those ideas and concepts? No, I, I've been I've been the sole creator of all my designs. Uh -huh. um, I come up with the ideas, uh, the concept, colors, designs, everything, everything. And uh, I've done that for years. This is something that my uncle uh, taught me how to do at a very young age. He would always change his designs on the mask or tights. He would only keep the symbols that represented the name uh, Ray, the crown, and mystery, the question mark. So uh, people would identify Ray Mysterio with those two symbols. With me, I kept the, the one design that I thought um, um, was more comparable to my style, which were the Falcons because of my style of wrestling and the, the crown. Eventually I changed it to a cross as for my, uh, religious beliefs. Hmm. Very cool. And do you, are you still helping as far as Dominic with what you wear? Are you still designing <laughs> that together and everything? You can answer that. What happened? Yeah. To your design? yeah he, uh, he, he helped me with the whole thing. <laughs> Very cool. He's a marketing yeah. genius, Dom. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think about Dom's outfit? Man, I think they're cool. I, yeah. I and and I was like, well, you can definitely. It's he's carrying on the legacy, and so I figured, you know, and I didn't know if hey, you're you know taking off with what your father kind of established and creating, but it sounds like Dad's involved and in helping with some of the designs. I think it's badass, and I love the hood. So oh, yeah, thank you. Go. Yeah, that, hey, that's all. I'll I'll credit to him. Oh, there you go. Pops is yeah. Pops has got the magic work in there. Well, listen. Ray, real quick here, when you signed, going back to kind of your, you know, you're evolving into the WWE, when you sign, are you expected to be a cruiserweight or are they basically saying, hey, we're excited to see you work with guys like Kurt and work with some, uh, you know, Triple H and, and some of the, the big boys? What, did, what does that conversation look like? I had very few communication with, uh, with uh, um, creative at the time, uh, because I, that, that was something that I, that I picked up way too late in my career in WCW, I kind of just show up, showed up to work and whatever match I had, I would go out there, put on a banger and move on to the next night, you know, with WWE at the beginning, it kind of happened the same. Uh -huh. Um, I was never really given a direction on which way we were going. Although they did say that they wanted to push the Ray Mysterio brand. So, um, you know, they kept the word. We went, we went all the way from the beginning. Um, now I know we're going to talk about this in a minute, but, um, Kurt was the first one to kind of take me by his arm and, and, you know, bring me into, to the circle of trust because it, it is all about trust. 
Well, thank you, Ray. <laughs> but, you know, uh, speaking of me, it takes until August when we're in a six-man together. And the match was with Edge, you, John Cena, versus me, Chris Benoit, and Eddie Guerrero. And you actually pinned me with the springboard Frankensteiner into a roll-up after the 619. And I actually did a pre-tape afterward where I said, I can't believe I got beat by a 12-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, how much fun was that match? I mean, it was oh. most of the SmackDown Six. Oh my God, it it was uh, the most incredible times um, in this company. Great you time, know, um, yeah. That that particular time were my favorite matches. Yes. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually very lucky, Kurt, to have caught you right before you uh, took any steps otherwise than WWE, because I've always enjoyed watching your style and. And I really didn't realize how fucking good you really were <laughs> until you. I stepped in the ring with you and how much you wanted to learn Lucha. And, and you know uh, how scared you, I was to wrestle you? No, <laughs> I never wrestled a Lucha match before. I, well, you know, I, you, you have to learn how to, you know, ground. You're the ground base. guy, you know, you're, yes. you're the base. Yeah. And it was, yeah. I was a little nervous, especially that match at SummerSlam. I think it was no. one. It was only 12 minutes, but everybody talks about it. God damn yeah, it! It was a twelve-minute match, but yeah. it was really high action. We opened the show. I don't know if you remember. Yes, I do. I do. I remember coming out of the ring. I remember being underneath the ring, and uh, I was nervous, nervous as hell, because we opened up the show. And uh, okay, Ray, get ready. Like shit, I can't find my mask. Where's my mask? <laughs> so we're using the monitor to kind of light and see where my mask had gone. Eventually, I was able to put it on. Is that what took you so out. long? <laughs> yes. I'm waiting for yeah. you to jump me. Yeah, you were like, "Yay!" <laughs> yeah. Now that that move that I kicked off the match with, I hadn't done. God, in a long time, and uh, I was. <laughs> I, no, I wasn't nervous. I was nervous for the match overall, mm -hmm. um, but that happens all the time. As soon as I make the first move, I can start my my rhythm just kind of flow. Um, but. But yeah, that that it was nonstop. Kurt. That match was incredible to me. That's my best match that I've had with you. Yeah, I agree, Ray. Hundred percent. That that's where I was headed next. That was your pay per view debut, I believe that you're talking about SummerSlam 2002, yeah. where you started off the show. And uh, Kurt would ultimately win the competitor uh, that he is. I know he'd want me to make sure he mentioned that. But uh, <laughs> this is a fun one, and uh, and you guys are already sharing some fun memories. I was going to ask for a few fun memories from that one. But, man, you said it was your favorite match with the two of you, and it's your pay-per-view debut. It, it, it actually gives it a bit of a flavor from Halloween Havoc, just the intensity right off the bat. Um, with Eddie, I did something very similar. We started off really hot until I did the, the one and a half from the inside to the outside to the apron. And then Eddie just clipped my leg from the apron. And I took a bump. We did something very similar with Kurt. Very similar. Uh, yes. We're yes. Trip and, you out, and, pulled you out of the ring. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it started fast paced and that match, uh, we never stopped. I mean, we would, we would have little moments of, of breaks, but we were nonstop just going at it. Now, Kurt, do you remember, uh, um, prior to us having that match, what you told me? No. <laughs> no? Okay, so um, so apparently you had told me, because uh, uh, I had no idea. He said, they asked me who I wanted to work with next, and they gave me three names, and I picked you. I was like, I do oh. remember, yes. You remember that? <laughs> yes. Yeah. They wanted okay. to know who I wanted to work at SummerSlam, and you were in my top three. Yeah. Yes. I was yes. intrigued by you since you were in WCW, Ray. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having the trust because it's moments like that, that uh, kind of take you to the next level, you know, and for guys like you and like Dean and WCW, Eddie, that trusted in me um, to be able to pull out uh, a great performance is what eventually has taken me to where I'm at now. You're absolutely right, Ray. It's, it's fantastic. I just got a comment here. The recall that both of you have about a match that happened in 2002 with the amount of matches that you both have worked since then. And you're calling, oh, the spot where you swept That's my legs out on the was. side. It's unbelievable <laughs> to me as I sit here listening uh, to this. So, uh, now nah, thank you for sharing those memories. No, thank you, guys. Hey, thank you, Kurt, for, for having the trust in me and for mm -hmm. wanting to work Lucha style. 
I love you, Ray. <laughs> I love you too, man. Yeah, and you adapted so fast and so well too. I, I, you know what? I'm a fast learner, but I, I was really nervous that night because I never wrestled a lucha style before. So it was a first for me and it was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. So easy to work with, man. Yeah. Thank you. You as well. Well, we were considered part of Paul Heyman SmackDown six at the time with Edge, Benoit, Chavo and Eddie Guerrero and you and me. How big of a deal was that for you as it was for me, man? Oh, it was, it was a big deal. You know, um, the ratings were coming up. Uh, we were like the top bases of the SmackDown brand. Um, you know, we were giving out everything, every single night. We were just having a blast. We were enjoying it. We were traveling, touring together. So, uh, we became you know, was, the wrestling show. We were yes. more high action, more, more than storyline. Yes. You know, Raw was the, you know, flagship show with the storylines. Yep. But SmackDown, with the SmackDown 6, we would just switch around and work programs with each other. And yeah. it was so much fun. You know, but, I never got bored doing it. No, no. But we would also, uh, we would throw in doses of, of comedy and character, you know, with like all the stuff you were doing. Um, like when you said, uh, I got beat, can't believe I got beat by a 12 year old kid. <laughs> just little things that were giving us credibility for what we were doing in the ring which made it even better. It made it very entertaining. Yes. You uh, you guys, uh, the six, you talked about it being the foundation uh, of the launch of the SmackDown brand, and you had a classic three-way tag match at Survivor Series in 2002. It stands out amongst them. What was it about your group that you think has us all still talking about it today? Here we are, 2021, still talking about that. The uh, The energy that we all had at the time, you know, the fact that that we were trying something new, you know, we were all kind of um, mixing up our ideas and putting everything on the table, you know, going all out. And I think that's when when uh, you can really tell how good the product is when everybody's on the same page and everyone's willing to put in and to listen and to go the direction that the company needs to go, you know, in order to create uh, great content. And we were all on the same page at that point, you know, and enjoying it on top of that. And we were all friends, which is we really all, cool. We all got along extremely well. Incredible. We brought Incredible. Up, everybody brought some, something different to the table. Yeah. Yeah. Until you uh, were going to fight Eddie that one time. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. You know, Eddie and I got in this argument and he thought I stepped him in the ring and yes. you know, he ends up double legging me. I end up starting to choke him out and, and Big Show <laughs> breaks it up. Embarrassed the hell out of me, by the way. He pulled me by my uh, my singlet, carried me like a little kid across the room. I got little guy syndrome. I got up and said, don't ever touch me again. <laughs> I was pissed. And uh, so I go in to apologize to Eddie and uh, I said, Eddie, I'm sorry about it earlier. He said, well, I'm not ready to apologize. I said, oh, yeah, let's go right now. <laughs> and we were back at it again. Oh, you know, man. Eddie and I had a love-hate relationship. We, oh, we got along right, like brothers, and we fought like brothers. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's crazy. That's, that's how Eddie was, you know, with, the, with guys that he loved very much. M me, probably, I'm the only guy that never really fought with him <laughs> verbally. But Chavo constantly, Benoit constantly, you – you know, that was, that I'm was glad Eddie, I'm not the, the only one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough love, Eddie. Well, hey, I have a question for Dom. Who was your biggest inspiration outside of your father? Anybody come to mind? Oh, man. So many names come to mind. Um, you know, guys like Randy, guys like you, uh, Jericho, Eddie, you know, Benoit. Um, I, grew, I grew up watching, you know, SmackDown with you guys at SmackDown six and along with edge and Christian. And, you know, I can go on and on if, with the tag teams and everything, but um, I, I just, I enjoyed the product so much growing up that, you know, it's, it's hard to pinpoint like who specifically, because I picked up so much from everyone. Right. Great. Now, the, the, uh, Kurt, did you know um, my first pay-per-view with WWE 2002, the SummerSlam pay-per-view? Yes, sir. Dom's first pay-per-view, 2021, 2020, I'm sorry, 
SummerSlam pay per view. Nice, that's wrong, right. man. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Like, what are that the odds is of that? That's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, what, so what are the odds his of that? His first pay per view. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Well, some of my favorite matches were back then, Ray, uh, when we wrestled at uh, SummerSlam. But our next big match together was WrestleMania 22, where you win the world title for me a match in a match with Randy Orton. I still think it was too short, but how awesome was it for you to reach the top of the mountain at WrestleMania? Oh, incredible. Uh, that was uh, the, the peak moment of my career. Like, that's when, okay, <laughs> you have changed the sport. You have opened up the doors for guys like you to eventually come through. And um, that was all thanks to, to um, the opportunities that I got to work to be able to prove to Vince and to uh, um, the people in charge with the pen and paper that, you know, I, I am able to, to attract a different crowd that I can have uh, fans back me up and believe in me. You know, same thing happened with Eddie and with Chris, you know, for so long, they were waiting for them to become champions. And that moment came and it changed the industry forever. Um, same thing happened with me, you know, um, and I'm, I'm really truly blessed to have, to have been given that opportunity. And not only that, but to have been able to share that moment with you and with Randy which are two of my top favorites. Thank you, Ray. You know what? It, it's crazy, but do you think that Eddie winning the world title and Benoit went winning the world title and Jericho, uh, guys that were a little bit undersized, do you think that gave you more of an opportunity to end up winning the world title? Yeah, I, I think it, it all started happened. started changing. You didn't have to be yeah. a big guy anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I think it all happened based on, on timing. And uh, I don't say this in a bad way, but uh, uh, Eddie passing in November kind of opened up that door because of the connection that Eddie and I had. And the fans still to this day, they would see Eddie through me. And uh, I think that was a direction that, that the fans wanted. I don't know if necessarily the company wanted to go that direction, but if there was one person that always vouched for me was Pat Patterson. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he you. Saw, yeah. yeah, he saw something special and, uh, based off of that, you know, Eddie passes in November, I win the rumble in January and then, uh, in April, you know, I win the title. So, uh, uh, definitely, I don't know. It, it might've happened down the road later, perhaps, but because Eddie was no longer with us, I think, uh, the momentum kind of shifted over to me. Would you say that was the moment or was there another moment in time where you thought, Hey, I'm going to have a shot or they're going to strap the rocket to my back for, to have a run here as a WWE champion. Like this is really going to happen for me. What was that moment in time that you recognize that as becoming potentially a reality for you? Or uh, I, I think, I think during that time, WrestleMania, okay. without a doubt, um, uh, I just, I never, I never took the time to work on what I needed to work on in order to back that title up. And that was work on my promos, character development, you know, something that uh, in, in Lucha, you were never taught that part of this industry. So um, I think that's where I really dropped the ball tremendously on not being able to back up having the title and being able to cut promos, never been really a, a promo guy. Um, I, I'm, I want to say that I do most of my talking inside the ring, you know, and that's what fans know me for. So, uh, um, but yeah, I think, I think if I would have done uh, my end of the job, I think uh, the, uh, the outcome would have been more different. Well, Dominic, your match against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam was a feature match. That's a big deal. You had to be so pumped to get in the ring with him at such a young age. Am I correct? Oh, most definitely. I was, uh, I was excited. Um, I, I thought it was a joke at first when I thought I was going to wrestle. When he told me, I thought, he was, I thought my dad was kidding. I, but uh, it, it, they were serious, and uh, it ended up becoming uh, one of my favorite matches. And, I'm, I mean, I've only had a year. 
So, so we, we already had a plan uh, lined up for Dom. You for know, uh, title run? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, plan to, to go to the Performance Center, train, and get ready to eventually sign with the company. Um, oh. When this whole angle kind of just started to evolve organically, uh, they brought it up to my attention if Dominic would be interested in wrestling. I personally didn't think he was ready, but I told him. That's why he said I thought uh, my dad was joking. But no, they were serious. They wanted to know if he can uh, be part of that match for SummerSlam. And uh, sure enough. Yeah, no, when he asked me, he's like, no, it's serious. I told him, all right, let's do it. I, th I thought I was ready. I had been training already for a little over two years. So uh, if, if there was going to be a time, now was the time. You know, I wasn't going to you know, skip on this opportunity. Now, keep in mind, Kurt, keep in mind that I, I told him, I said, if, if I were to make the decision for you, I would, I would not take it right. because I didn't want him to fail. Um, if he took the opportunity and he did bad, it's very hard to cover that up. So uh, first impression is always a, the best one. So uh, I was really worried. Well, Dominic, you are in an extremely unique situation when you think about it from a pressure uh, standpoint, and no one has really faced the pressure that you have, and I mean it from two perspectives. First, the son of Rey Mysterio. That comes with its own set of pressures, right? Having to be on the big stage and, and wrestle behind a, a legend. But also, you started wrestling during a pandemic on TV with no audience, and then all of a sudden... You're now wrestling in front of thousands of people. And so that brings on its own set of challenges. But you have lived up to the hype in both regards, not only following in the footsteps of your dad and and showing that you can do it all in the ring from what we've seen as fans. And I've seen nothing but love and support and respect on social and online for what you've been able to accomplish. But then you were able to easily transition out of that virtual world, the Thunderdome, right into wrestling lat and just made it all look look easy. Can you talk about a little bit about those different pressures that you've had to face and what it's been like kind of coming through that? Yeah, well, thank thank you for for the kind words. I appreciate it. Um, but honestly, it's uh it was kind of weird because um I was so used to like working around the cameras and like the in the Thunderdome. So um and everyone, everyone was telling me that it's a different vibe. It's a different feeling when the crowd comes, but I had only known one adrenaline feeling. And that was just, I was going, I, I was pumped up either way to be out there. Um, and, but once those fans hit, um, I believe we were at the Toyota center in Houston yep. and, you know, we, we kicked off the show. It was, I, you know, I teamed with my dad and edge against Roman and Uso. So like, that that's surreal in and of its own. So I was, I was just excited, man. It, it it's 110% a different feeling and a different vibe out there with the crowd. And I, I love it. Um, he had, he had gotten a little taste of that. Um, Super way serious. back. No, actually Lucha underground. Yeah. Uh. And Lucha underground. That was his first like little, um, angle, uh, being a teenager at that point. And, uh, then after that survivor series, with uh Brock. with Brock, it was actually a SmackDown. It was SmackDown when he dragged you out of the that was raw. Oh, that was raw. Yeah. Sorry. When he was dragged out of the of the front row and uh he was yeah. given a whooping by Brock. <laughs> and yes, then of course <laughs> yeah, man, what an ass kicking, huh? Wow. Oh my god, Dom. <laughs> You're a tough son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then of course Survivor Series when we did the double six one nine for the first time. So he kind of had that uh that kind of vibe to feed off of yeah. yeah and then of course until toyota center came by and now the attention was strictly on him when he stepped in the ring mm. so it was cool well so you mentioned lucha underground ray getting back to you you're with wwe at that point you know getting back to your timeline there for 13 years all right uh -huh. what made you decide to move on after that time uh my body was drained uh drained mentally physically and uh, i just I wanted to get away uh really um i just couldn't go anymore you know i was running on empty and uh my contract had come up uh there was really no uh 
show of interest from uh, from WWE to kind of resign me. And uh, at the same time, I thought it was just the perfect timing for for me to take a break and you know focus on myself, my family, and see if there's anything else out there for me. And sure enough, Lucha Underground came along. I went back to Mexico and and uh, just kind of visited the people that that grew up watching me, you know, and wrestled for about two years over there with them. And I did a little bit of Japan as well. So I, I, I was able to enjoy uh, the stuff that I wasn't able to do because everything happened so fast. Mexico, ECW, WCW, and WWE. You just kept going one company to another, no yeah. rest. Yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of you leaving the WWE, we actually wrestled together in 2006, 16 for a company called Your Fight, and a rapper named Riff Raff helped you win. It was great <laughs> to be in the ring with you again, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. I remember the ceiling being really low. You couldn't do anything off the top rope. Yes. I was like, oh, my God, I have Ray Mysterio tonight. He's not going to be able to do anything up from the top rope, which is, you know, half of your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what happened to that company. I, they obviously went under. Yeah, I think they did. And, and shortly after, too. Um, but it was a good. Uh, did you get your payday? I'm sorry. Did you get your payday for that? Yes, I did. Okay, because I know they paused it on you for a little bit. Yeah, they, they did. But no. We managed to figure it out. Okay. Um, but, yeah, that, that was a good, uh, good time to reconnect, you know, after not being in the ring or sharing the ring together for quite some time. Yeah, I had a blast that night. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ray, fast forward that from there, you returned to WWE at the Royal Rumble in 2018 before signing a full-time deal later on. What was it like to return to WWE after doing your own bookings and in Indies in Japan and Mexico? What was that like to finally make the return home to WWE? It felt good. It felt like, uh, like I needed that break, needed to step away from the big scene and uh, focus on myself. And, you know, uh, the interest that I had wrestling in other places without going too extreme, uh, no impact or, or uh, just any, any other bigger wrestling company that's not WWE. I kind of just did my own thing, you know, and mainly because I did want to go back to Mexico and, and do a little bit of Mexico. But overall, you know, coming back after, after that time, it felt good. It felt like I was uh, uh, energized once again. I was ready to go. And the, the other good thing about it is um, we kind of met in the middle. You know, I wasn't looking out for them and they weren't looking out for me. It kind of just happened. We mixed and the timing was perfect. Well, it had to be amazing teaming with your son, Dominic, at this point in, in your career. Uh, when you came back to WWE and Dominic joined you. Am I correct? Yeah. You had guys, oh. you know, was it, was it, um, what did it mean to you? No, uh, well, I'm sure Dominic can answer that because when he started training, when I came back to WWE in 2018, the the purpose of my return as well was to eventually get Dominic situated and, uh, you know, go to the Performance Center. That happened so fast between angles with Samoa Joe and, uh, and Seth, but Seth was the last one. And I think we, we worked with Joe first, remember? Yeah, it was, Joe, uh, it was Brock, Joe. Seth. Brock, Joe, Seth, yeah. And by the time he got to Seth, it was like, okay, uh, let's get him in there. And we're like, whoa. He doesn't God. need an XT. Yeah, he hasn't been to the Performance Center yet. Let my family save your family some cash. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need money out of your pocket. But we will save you money. It's not a matter if. It's a matter of how much. Savewithconrad.com. <laughs> like, whoa. So you're the only one yeah. that skipped NXT, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, to, to have, to have seen his, his career take off in a blink of an eye. And it really didn't even give me time to digest or to even capture. Okay. You're wrestling. You wrestled one day, SummerSlam the next day, the next day we tagged the next day we tagged. And we talked about, oh, imagine one day when we get to wrestle 
uh, with each other, you know, as tag team. Like this was all conversations that we were having when he started to train. But now it's, it happens so fast. So it's like, wow, you know, it just it didn't give us time to absorb the moment. Dominic, it, this had to be a dream come true for you, right? Tagging with your dad and working with your dad in this business. Oh, most definitely. You know, it's uh, not only is it a dream come true for me, but, you know, having him in my corner, just helping me out in any way, shape or form that he can, just guiding me and, you know, giving me little tips in Spanish and stuff like that is just it's been an, a, a huge help for me and being able to move on and, and just, you know, evolve as a performer. He's the person you can trust the most, too. Yeah, most definitely. Without a doubt, he's got your best interests at heart. No, no doubt about it, right? No one's going to care for you like your dad. Yeah. So cool. Well, Ray, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I'm sure many listeners would agree, but when Kurt returned to WWE, I think there was a missed opportunity for one more match between the two of you. And I'm going to ask you both this. I know you already said it was SummerSlam 2002, but what was your favorite match against each other or maybe some of your favorite memories working together? Uh, Ray, you go first. Um, there was a match that we had in, I believe it was San Diego, Kurt. Uh, was it Benoit, you and myself? Oh, it was yeah, the tag match. Yes. Yes, that, that match was incredible. Um, obviously, being in my hometown uh, brings back the memory, but overall like the connection we had that night the moves we were doing i mean it's it, it, like I, I can see a lot of the moves that nowadays are being displayed um but to me it looks more choreographed the way they're doing them now back then we were just we were doing them but it made it look realistic i think that's the correct word well, we and, were speeding uh, it up, slowing it down, speeding it up, slowing it down. Yeah, yeah. We were yeah. great psychology. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wish I wish that this generation that's up and coming would pick up a little bit of that because it's going to make a huge difference. You're going to educate the fans and, uh, you know, you're going to make them value um, what you do even more without the, I was just like that when I first came in. I was doing move after move after move right. and it took me a while to slow down, but eventually I did. But yeah, that match in San Diego was definitely one of that really stands out for me. Well, Ray, I think we could have one more match together, but I need to find a tag team partner against you and Dominic. So I don't have to do all the work just like you don't have to now. <laughs> you have to no, admit, Ray, mistaken. Dominic's mistaken. there. He does have to do work for work. you. <laughs> no, I still do all the work. I take oh, that. here we go. We got controversy. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about that at another time, Ray. Okay. But we want to thank you for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. I love both of you guys very much, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Paul. Love you guys very much, thank too. You. Thank you for having us on board, man. Absolutely. You thank you both. Well, Kurt, what'd you think about that? Ray and Dom joining us today. Oh, that was, that was awesome. Actually, that was my favorite episode. Uh, I love Ray Mysterio to death. He's such a great guy, uh, solid kid, great heart, uh, so easy to get along with, the nicest person I've ever met. And uh, I can't say enough good things about Ray Mysterio. He is a he is a class act, and uh, so is Dom. You can tell that Dom's they are, just like his father. Yes, yes, he, he is. He's just a, a good kid, and he's picked up the business. He's. He's not riding his dad's coattails. He knows what he's doing in the ring, and it's evident by watching what he does in the ring, man. So, uh, no, fantastic episode. I'm just, again, fortunate to be a part of it. So thank you, Kurt, for allowing me to be here. You uh, are welcome, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, let's do what you do best, and that's pitch him shit. So, Kurt, why don't you talk about what you got going on uh, with physicallyfit.com and and talk about your uh, chicken snacks, man, because I know you got a big deal going on this week. We have now. a new promotion, Paul. For all my fans, I have a fantastic exclusive gold card mem member program for the first 250 people. The gold card gives you 20% off of my physically fit protein bites every day with a three-bag minimum purchase. Head to physicallyfit.com right now and get your gold card. Once you have the official founding member card in hand, you can start getting your daily discount. So 
the first 250 people that get this membership card will always get 20% off forever. <laughs> wow. So they want but the you gold have card. Act now they're going to go fast, buddy. These are going to move quickly. This, as this drops on October 10th, they will not be around on October 11th. <laughs> go to physically to get your gold card. <laughs> be a gold card member for the gold medalist, right? That's right. That's why it's called the gold card. <laughs> if you want to be gold, like he's gold. There it is. If you want to be gold, like he's gold, then you better go <laughs> October 10th and register right away. I love it, Kurt. And can they still go to the website and use Angle Pod and get 20% off as well? Yes, they go to the website and use okay. Angle Pod code. But this is a lifetime deal, man. You're giving one. it away for life if you're a gold card member. So that's a big deal. Yeah. yeah I is. love it. Okay. So there's your chicken snacks. That's going to get you your pizza, your jalapeno, your buffalo wing, your uh, cinnamon swirl. I, I, I know the family. Barbecue. Big, yeah. The big, the, the, and I know people are loving that cinnamon swirl. I tried the pizza, yeah. and uh, thankfully the mute button was work because I had a handful right before we recorded and was choking on them through the interview. But I'm good to go now. <laughs> but they're good, man. I'm telling you, good stuff, and they're healthy. That's the key because Lord knows half the stuff I put in my mouth is not healthy. <laughs> so thank you. And for I want to thank me. everybody out there who's purchasing the chicken snacks. I really do appreciate you supporting my business. Absolutely. And then talk about the Kurt Angle brand at KurtAnglebrand.com. Well, we got a lot of good things for you at a very affordable prices. You know, autograph photos would go for $31. Birthday cards, $26. You got cowboy hats, uh, milk cartons, T-shirts, um, video messages. We have the whole ball of wax. Go to um, KurtAnglebrand.com. And if you want, if you have an item that you want me to sign, you could send it in the mail to the address on the website. And I will personalize it and sign it for you and send it back to you if you have a prepaid postage envelope and a small donation. I'll get that back to you. I know a lot of people have a memorabilia that they want signed. I'll do that for you and send it back to you. Listen, and those video messages, they, you don't sleep on those. If you want to wish someone a happy birthday or happy anniversary or congratulations on your bar mitzvah, any of these things, Kurt Angle can do that for you through a video message, right? Kurt? Cameo video messages. Yeah, oh, I can man. do that. Oh, it's true. It's damn it's, true. It's damn true. And he's got the three eyes and he's bringing them strong in the videos. <laughs> so love it. Take advantage of all this great access to Kurt Angle, our hero, our Olympic gold medalist. And guys, as we wrap up the show, make sure you come back next week. It's TNA Bound for Glory 2011 as only told by Kurt Angle. He's got the full story on what happened on that memorable pay-per-view. And I got to leave you with adfreeshows.com. This is where you're going to get to see this exclusive interview that we just did with Ray and Dom on video. Yes, we saw them face to face, their reactions, their smiles, the storytelling. You can find it all on video and ad free. Plus, lots of exclusive content. Kurt was just on for an amazing QA uh, with our top guys and gals and our ad and our members over there. And uh, we do some bonus shows together. Kurt and I will get together in October and do some every fun. month. So check it out adfreeshows.com. Kurt, I had a fantastic time with you today. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of the show. Thank you for being a co-host, Paul. I appreciate you got it, buddy. Anytime. <laughs> well, listen, that's going to wrap us up for this week's show. Again, shout out to Ray, Mysterio, and Dom for joining us. Kurt Angle, the pleasure has been all mine. And that's going to do it for this week on The Kurt Angle Show. We'll see you next time. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.